Welcome to the Gift Up Podcast. Make sure to hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe. We're moving on to the Steelers in the AFC North. First off, I want to give a lot of credit to Mike Tomlin for what he was able to accomplish last year. And you talk about Coach of the Year candidates, I think that there's no doubt in my mind that he should be at the top of anybody's list. The defense was coached exceptionally well. And then the fact that they were down to their third string quarterback, the fact that Juju was hurt and they really had no weapons to throw to, you got to give credit to Mike Tomlin for that. It's one of the best coaching jobs that I've seen in recent years, you know, outside of, you know, Super Bowl winning teams and Bill Belichick and things like that. Um, Tomlin is up on that list. But I think now the attention for this season definitely focuses on Big Ben. Because if Big Ben's not healthy and he gets hurt again with a non-contact injury, we're stuck with Mason Rudolph. We're stuck with Delvin the Duck Hodges, uh, Paxton Lynch. I mean, th those are guys that you don't want to see on the field. Uh, Mason Rudolph, I, I liked him coming out of college. I think the jury is still out on him. But that being said... Nothing on film right now has shown that he can be a legit starter and bring this team to the playoffs. So that being said, Big Ben's got to stay healthy. If he is, I think it's going to be between him and Cam Newton for comeback player of the year. I think it's going to be a tight race. I do think Cam Newton is going to win that award. But that being said, I think it's going to be close. And Big Ben could get back to his old ways, throwing 30 touchdowns. You know, almost thrown for 5,000 yards. That's what we need from Big Ben. I think it's possible that he can get back to that. And it's because of the weapons that they got now, too. Uh, I like, well, Juju is a top receiver in this league. He's already proven that. I think he's just going to get better. Uh, Chase Claypool, I like that pick this year. I like that pick. I think he's going to be a dynamic player for them and just bring it all. You know, Juju has everything, too. Chase Claypool, I think, is a big-time playmaker. He can do a lot for you at receiver, too. Those two guys together. I thought James Washington was going to come along. He hasn't yet. Last year in the preseason, he actually looked pretty damn good. Not sure why that didn't translate into the season. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't. But with Claypool and Smith-Schuster, I feel pretty comfortable. We know that they got their big, stocky, physical tight ends as well. Vance McDonald, uh, Zach Gentry. These guys are going to be bulls at the tight end position. Obviously, you're not going to get a ton of receiving yards with them, but they're in there to be physical, to, to get the tough yardage when needed, and to block and get the tough yardage. That's what they're there for. Uh, they always get it done. Uh, because that's, that's where I want to go into next is the run game for the Steelers. And... This O-line, I think, is extremely underrated when it comes to run blocking. You know, I like James Conner, uh, Jalen Samuels. I think that those guys do complement each other very well. But this O-line, you know, Villanueva at left tackle, DeCastro at right guard, Pouncey in that middle, these guys have been opening up run lanes for a while now and making this, this run game look good. They get, they get all that brunt work done, and they don't get a lot of credit. I think the Steelers are one of the better run-blocking units in the league. And I think they go under the radar with that. Because we always see James Conner making big plays when he's healthy, Jalen Samuels making big plays when he's on the field. But we forget that this O-line is a big reason for their success and a big reason why they were able to get as far as they did with the third-string quarterback. So that being said about this offense, I want to jump to the defense now. And there's just so much to like because it's got a mix of everything. Uh, it's got veteran presence. It's got young players that just seem to be getting better as the years go on. It's just really exciting. Um, Cameron Hayward, obviously, being the veteran there for a long time, still gets it done. I don't think he's dominant like some people say, but I do think he's a really good defensive lineman. I do like... Stefan to it as a role player. I really do because he's extremely physical still fairly young only seven years in the league But I, I do like him TJ Watt being a player that just seems to be getting better like a fine wine and TJ Watt's the type of player that can take over games 
So when you have that at the pass rushing position, that changes everything. It really does. You know, you're talking about crowd noise. You're talking about momentum that gets shifted from big plays that he makes. And he is dominant at times. I think here coming into this year with him, you know, still a young player, I just think he's going to get even more dominant. We'll jump to the linebacking core now. Devin Bush, I'm extremely excited about him, too. He knows where he needs to be on the field. I was excited watching him play last year, even as a rookie. You know, you could see there was some parts of his game that he needs to get a little bit better with, reading coverages a little bit better and things like that. But you could just tell his knack for the football, and you could just tell that his knack for the game. And on top of the fact that he's extremely physical – I think he's going to be one of those all-around good linebackers where he can cover, play the run, whatever. Um, I think he has that capability. I don't think, I'll be honest, I don't know about deep coverage with Devin Bush, but in cover two zone, stopping the run, I think Devin Bush can be really good. Bud Dupree, also a physical player up front, been getting it done for a while, as everybody knows. Um, And then just... The last thing I want to talk about is the secondary. A player that I'm excited about, believe it or not, is Terrell Edmonds. Uh, I just think that that's a player that we've seen get better and better, getting more field time. And I think he's going to be a legitimate starting strong safety for them. And I do feel like he can do a little bit of everything. I think he's going to develop into that. Right now, we haven't seen that from him. You know, coverage ability and whatnot. I think he's going to get better there. I like the addition of Minka Fitzpatrick. You know, we talked about that before, but I like that. Um, Joe Hayden, savvy veteran, been getting it done for a long time. I will say the one weakness of the defense, and that's corner depth and another starting corner. I'm not really sold on Steven Nelson. Uh, That, sorry, you're not going to convince me on that. So I do think that they are lacking another starting corner here. But at the same time, I think they got an extremely good pass rush, which which always makes up for that. And what Tomlin's been able to do uh, as head coach and pretty much the defensive coordinator as well, uh, you got to give him credit for what he's done. Uh, So I would, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of weaknesses with this team. I would say the secondary might be their only weakness. Um, And with that, I got them taking the AFC North above the Ravens, which I know is going to catch me a lot of flack. Uh, Tomorrow, I'm going to come on and talk about the Ravens, and I'm going to talk about the Browns as well. I still think the Ravens are going to give them a fighting chance. Uh, I think that the Ravens could make a wild card, but I'm telling you, if Big Ben's healthy and I had to put money on it right now, I'm betting the Steelers to win the division. And with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.